Okay, so I heard a lot of hype about this song. This is by the group Hurricane. Um, the song is called Hasta La Vista, and it is the entry for, it was the winner of uh, Veo Vizia 2020, and it's the representative for Serbia at Eurovision this year. Um, and I heard, yeah, like I said, I heard rumblings about this being like the bop of 2020. This was like the song. Um, it was giving us, you know, girl group, Euro dance. Um, and so when I finally did check it out, I had a lot of expectations, um, of it being a, you know, a song that was going to really shake me to my core, so to speak. I left feeling very drained. Again, controversial opinion incoming. <laughs> I am seeing, seeing a lot of love for this song. I think people are even more sort of into it this year because there are quite a few ballads this year. Although, again, I don't think people, I think people are over-exaggerating a little bit how many ballads we're getting this year. It's pretty even, I would say, in terms of like mid-tempo, up-tempo ballad versus ballad. But, um, you know, people don't like having too many ballads, even if there's some good ballads. Um, and people want something that, you know, understandably, you want to pick the energy up, you know, at a performance, you're seeing like, you know, 24 songs competing, you know, in a row, like you don't want them all to be sleepers. I get that. Um, so this song definitely picks that energy up. It kind of gets the blood going in different ways for certain people. Um, they're very, very beautiful women. Um, they're very sort of what I would kind of expect from a you know, a uh, girl group, they're, they're giving me, you know, little mix energy. They're very pussycat dolls, Danity Kane, um, Fifth Harmony. But the song itself for me is very stale. And, um, you know, listening to the studio cut, seeing the live performance at the Beovizia final, now, I was going to say something about the vocals, um, but I did see some comments, people saying that two of the vocalists were under the weather during that performance, so they weren't up to par from their usual standard. So I do feel like it might be maybe a bit unfair for me to come too harshly on their vocal performance um, because, you know, it is tough. You know, not everyone's always on par. Um, and so... And with a song like this, you know, I mean, do they have to necessarily have the strongest vocals? Well, that's where I kind of default to the choreography. For a song like this, um, choreography has got to be huge. It's got to be so energetic. And I don't know if I'm just watching a different performance than everyone else, but it looked to me like the choreo was kind of, you know, uh, Britney Spears, VMAs 2007-ish. You know what I mean? Yeah, like very uninspired and almost kind of like, oh, I'm just going through the motions. I don't want to be here. Like it felt like that. I mean, obviously this this feels like a very commercial product and it definitely is a bit on an authentic feeling in that regard anyway. Um, and so if we're judging it based on a performance, it just, I don't know. I mean, it, and for me personally, it didn't seem like they were that into it um, or, you know, they it was just, it was cringy to me. I hate to say it, but I'm, I don't know. And I'm not feeling the chorus. I'm not really feeling the, what everyone gets behind about this song. Again, I think it's overproduced to hell. Like there is everything thrown at this song and in the mixing of it. And, you know, with the backing track playing, you know, for the live performance, it definitely doesn't help because it just drowns out their vocals even more. And, like I said, there's like, it's the same issue I had with the Moldovan entry. There's these really interesting ethnic sort of instrumentals moving underneath all of this over the top production and like, and whatever's going on on that and um, on the synths and everything. And it just drowns out all a lot of the mix. And so you really do just feel kind of assaulted. Um, and, you know, I'm going to bring up a song I haven't talked about yet, but a song that I think does really well produced, but with a lot going on really well is Israel's entry, Fekker Libby, which I'm going to film a review for in a couple days and I'm very excited to talk about. But uh, if you want to talk about a song that's just like got doing it right with upbeat dance choreography, kind of girl group moment, even though she's more of a solo artist, you know, and but like there's a lot of production and there's a lot of things happening, but it just feels like it's mixed better and it's more like I just want to listen to that would be a song I would point to. This song is 
Yeah, it's a wall of sound attacking me. Um, and I mean, if you compare it to Fuego and, you know, what Eleni Ferrero is doing, and if you compare it to, I mean, I'm not saying that, like, everything has to come down to the choreography being, like, ungodly, like, really on point. Like, and I mean, I understand that this wasn't the Eurovision stage, and I have a feeling that they're going to come at that stage with a lot more energy and vigor. And so, I mean... Yeah, there's so much possibility that's yet untapped with this song. But at the same time, the song itself, unless it got revamped to be toned down just a little bit in terms of the production, um, maybe I would get more on board with it. But yeah, there's just, it's a lot of like shouting and it's a lot of like aggressive kind of a beats attacking you. And I, that's just not my thing with music anymore, especially. Like I'm a little bit more kind of like in that Zen headspace and songs like these just kind of get, there's just too much going on. It just, it's, it feels schizophrenic. Um, and so, uh, and, and as far as like dancing, even, I don't really feel like moving to this song. There's just something very static about it because like I said, the dynamic, it's like full on right from the beginning and it just stays that way. And it's, it's not even that catchy. Like, what is it about the chorus that's that catchy, that memorable to me? I don't know. To you, I, I don't know what people see in this song, to be completely honest with you. Um, sorry, I'm such a prude. I know this is an okay boomer type of uh, take here that I'm giving you all, but I'm being real. That's what this channel is about. And um, the interesting thing about Eurovision is usually, you know, when I'm covering stuff on this channel, it's artists that I actually always love. You know, I only want to talk about stuff that I'm like, deeply moved by or like I feel like I'm really excited to dissect and, and 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 you know talk about so I don't usually trash things and I'm not trying to trash this you know like I said I'm trying to see its merits it's fun you know it's I'm glad the song's only three minutes because it's I can maybe handle it for three minutes you know it's definitely like I said lively the girl the girls look great and like I said I see potential I think they're gonna polish up the choreo I think they're gonna be stronger vocally I think they're going to sell a package it's not going to be like Cyprus. I don't, I mean, it's not going to be at that level. And I don't see this song coming into the top three. Um, I do see a qualifying. Again, it all does come down to the energy they have on stage, though. Um, will the fans show up to, well, will the juries? That's the big question. <laughs> uh, the juries are definitely going to uh, be a trickier hurdle for this song, I think. And in that case, I'm pretty in agreement there. I think the juries should be a little harder on this act. Um, because obviously the public is going to rally behind it, at least a lot of the younger public. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, just because the girls are gorgeous and, you know, and, and, and everything. I mean, it's a sexual song. It's definitely got a, you know, F you energy because I don't even understand the lyrics. And by the way, points for them singing in Serbian, but it's not unique for Serbia to sing a song in Serbian. Almost every year, except for 2015 and 2016, I believe. Um, they have been sending songs in Serbian. Um, and I, ironically, the one year they're not sending a ballad and everyone else is. So, but again, it's not everyone else. It's, it's really much more straight down the middle, but people are over-exaggerating the ballad heaviness of this year. Um, and so, yeah, good for them. I, they're, they're selling, you know, I, I'm getting the energy behind the lyrics of like, see ya, I don't need you anymore. You don't, you got a storm coming. Like that's what, you know, the, you know, the girl groups called hurricane. So that's what I'm getting from the lyrics. I, I mean, it's the kind of stuff where I feel kind of bad that I'm not going into the lyrical translation, but again, I'm not, I don't feel like I need to with this song. I just don't care about it that much. Like, do I really need to know the lyrics? I kind of get the idea. Um, it's not like other songs where I'm like, oh, I should really look at the lyrics because there's probably some really important, you know, messaging under that and like emotion behind that. But yeah, so again, this is just my take. It's probably unpopular, but you know, let me know what you think. Um, and like I said, I see potential with this. I'm not completely writing it off. Um, but in terms of my personal opinion, this is not it for me. This is not a song that I'm going to seek out to listen to again, unless it comes up in the playlist. And of course, when I'm seeing it performed. Um, so yeah, it's not a favorite of mine. And um, that's just the way it is. Uh, let me know what you think. Again, it's just my opinion. Let's have a discussion down in the comments. That's what I love to see. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more Eurovision content if you would like, if you have not already. And I will see you all in my next video. Hope you all have a wonderful, blessed day. Peace, love, and light. Hasta la vista.